Do you think it's ethical for media outlets to put out pieces that are actively pushing information that they know to be incorrect? And I'm not talking about journalists making mistakes and getting things wrong because we're only human and mistakes happen and it's just part of life. I'm talking about outlets intentionally misleading their audience by putting out misinformation because they're being paid to do so. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Do you think it should be illegal? Do you think that's just part of the First Amendment and freedom of speech and press? Do you think there's a way to hold them accountable without legal action? I have my own thoughts on it, but I would love to hear your opinion. The reason I'm asking the question is because I was sent this article titled 20 Drawbacks of Electric Vehicles Drivers Overlook, and it's so full of misinformation it is painful to read. Because I know I'm going to have random family members reading that and believing everything it said. From telling its readers that EV batteries aren't recyclable to alluding that EVs are going to collapse the global economy, it's almost hard to imagine a more deceptive article. And like I said, it's totally okay for media outlets to get things wrong. But when they're making the choice to actively deceive their audience because they're being paid to, that feels different to me. That's no longer an honest mistake. They're not even trying to get things right. They're literally just being a mouthpiece for whoever has the money. And given that Legacy Auto are some of the largest advertisers in the world, we know exactly where that money's coming from and why. Legacy Auto doesn't sell hardly any EVs, so you can see why it'd be in their best interest to spread misinformation about EVs being terrible to slow the adoption of EVs, while at the same time they scramble to catch up to Tesla. There's obviously a lot more to it than that, but I really want to dissect this article because it is just terrible. I'm not going to go over every point, but I'll leave a link to the original article below if you want to check it out. I just want to talk about the most egregiously deceptive ones so that we can clear the air. And we're going to start with number 16, which is not so environmentally friendly, and says that lithium ion batteries as well as their disposal is polluting since they aren't recyclable. The rising demand for electric power will only raise the level of global pollution. This is actually far beyond what internal combustion engines are doing now. Okay, so right out of the gate, obviously this is wrong. While recycling EV batteries is a complicated process and it's far from perfect, it is totally doable. That doesn't mean right now we can achieve 100% recycling efficiency, but we can recycle the vast majority of the battery. Right now we can recycle over 90% of the battery cell. The problem is largely cost, and because companies are in the business of making money, they're making the calculation on if it's cheaper to recycle old batteries or to mine new materials for new batteries. That being said, as recycling practices get better and costs come down, the industry expects more and more recycling to happen. But as far as this article is concerned, it's just a blatant lie. EV batteries are recyclable. Stating that they aren't is just wrong. Given that it's wrong and there was no correction issued, either the author didn't bother to do a simple Google search to see if they were recyclable when they were writing an article on recycling it, or they knew the batteries were recyclable, yet wanted to make EVs look worse than reality, so the author pushed the lie. I'll let you come to your own conclusion on that one while we tackle their next piece of handiwork. They say that EVs will increase global pollution because of the increased demand for electricity, which is more than the pollution from internal combustion engines. And this is a talking point that we've heard many times before, and it's just not true. While it is of course true that more EVs will increase overall electricity demand, when you compare the pollution from an EV being powered by even a pollutant electricity source like a coal power plant over its whole life, it's still less pollutant than a similar ICE vehicle. Not only that, but renewable energies like solar and wind are on the rise. As we can see from this chart from the US Energy Information Administration, renewable energies are now the second most prevalent electricity source, and the use of coal has gone down dramatically. While we still do produce the majority of our electricity with fossil fuels, that's shifting quickly, and we're going to see more and more renewable energies in the future. But not only that, using electricity for EVs gives us the flexibility to choose the source of that electricity, whereas gas cars can basically only use oil, which will always be a fossil fuel. So not only are EVs more environmentally friendly than their ICE counterparts today, but they're only going to continue to widen the gap as we increase our renewable energy sources. But back to the article, we have to consider why they, and many like 
like them are pushing the idea that ICE cars are less pollutant than EVs. Because when you look at the data, although complex, it's clear that even when powered by fossil fuels, EVs are better for the environment than ICE cars. But then when you see how many companies have a vested interest in keeping the world dependent on oil and the lengths they'll go to keep up oil consumption, it all starts to make sense. Oil companies and car manufacturers make up some of the largest companies in the world, and they're not going to lose revenue without a fight, even if the fight is incredibly dirty. Then the article says that EVs are too expensive, which can be true, but when you factor in operating costs, then the price can be much more competitive. Also, over time, the price has and will continue to come down. They say that EVs have lower top speeds, which again, can be true, but given the top speed is around 100 miles an hour, they're very rarely an actual problem. They bring up that having a low top speed is not only disappointing, but it can also be a problem in emergency conditions for European drivers where the speed limit on the highways is much higher. And sure, if you're on the German Autobahn, you're not going to be passing everybody, but most everywhere else, the max speed limit is around 70 miles an hour, which is no problem for even the slowest EVs. But it's points like this where you can see how the author is trying to push the agenda. Point number eight, I find pretty funny because they say that EVs will allow car manufacturers manufacturers to track your location, which, okay, fair enough, except that you would be hard pressed to find any modern car in 2022 that doesn't come standard with some sort of a GPS connection. EVs aren't unique in that ability. But the next point is actually crazy to hear. They just come out and say it. Number six, EVs are threatening existing economy models. Some economic experts fear that the mass production of electric vehicles and focus on this kind of technology will destroy the current economic model. That in turn will affect global politics and all the worldwide monetary systems as well. If the oil companies lose their monopoly on energy and the oil rich nations lose their authority on the global political scene, the world could be heading to another crisis. And this could be a whole video in and of itself, so we won't dive into the whole breakdown, but it is true that reducing our alliance on oil could have some pretty massive ramifications in global politics. But unlike the article, I see a reduction in reliance on massive oil monopolies to be a good thing. Like we're seeing with Russia's invasion of Ukraine right now, which I'm not gonna go into the details, but because Russia is a massive global exporter of oil, they have a really powerful card available to them. Also, it's not only cars that we use oil for. I can guarantee that even if we switch to 100% EVs, oil will still be widely used for tons of other things. Anyways, what this article seems to be arguing is that we want to maintain our dependence on oil monopolies, and I find that a ridiculous idea. I'm sure I don't have to explain why actively maintaining monopolies isn't a good thing. Then number five, they say that major car companies aren't convinced that electric vehicles are the future. That's obviously not true. Every major car manufacturer that I'm aware of has made some sort of a pledge to be electric in the next few decades. Whether or not they mean it is one thing, but publicly they are for sure saying that they're going electric. Then they say that EVs can't be your only car in your household, which is clearly not true. The article says, if you own one or you're looking to acquire an EV, you should know that it can't fulfill all your transportation needs. If you wanna go on a road trip with your family, you will need an internal combustion vehicle due to the range concerns and personal peace of mind. And that's just not true. While I agree that where you live is going to make a big difference on how easy it is to own an EV, the idea that you can't make a road trip in an EV is just silly. You can look up countless examples of people doing thousand mile road trips in their EVs, but to prove the point, here's a road trip from New York to LA driven in a Model 3. That's a 3,000 mile road trip. So yeah, without a doubt, you can have an EV as your only car. Their last point is another one that we hear a lot, and it's fun that's pretty expected at this point. They say most drivers lease their electric cars and then return them to the dealer after a few years to get a new model. However, those people who have bought electric vehicles could experience great difficulty selling them on the used car market or trading them in at the dealership. That is because electric cars depreciate much faster than gas powered vehicles since the technology is so new and still evolving. So that premise is that most people lease their EVs and then also that EVs depreciate faster than ICE vehicles. Let's address the first leasing issue because it's super easy. Legacy Auto traditionally leases about one in four cars, whereas if we look at Tesla, who sells the vast majority of EVs in the US, 
they lease about one in 20. So at least for the largest EV manufacturer in the world, leasing is much less common than with traditional ICE cars. Easy. But now we need to look at depreciation because this is something we hear a lot. As you could probably guess at this point, it's not true. The Tesla Model 3 actually has the lowest three-year depreciation of any car. Not just any EV, but any car. After three years, the Model 3 depreciated on average about 10%, whereas the industry average for ICE vehicles in its category is about 40%. So not only is depreciation not a problem for the Model 3, it's actually a huge selling point for Tesla. But even if we look at the Model S, which has a three-year depreciation of about 36%, that's still slightly below the industry average for ICE vehicles in its category. And it's important to remember that every other EV that isn't a Tesla has a much higher average depreciation of over 50% in three years. And when you take that into consideration, it makes Tesla's numbers even more impressive. It's not just Tesla's low depreciation for an EV, although it does, it's that Tesla has lower depreciation than ICE cars, which is a huge selling point for Tesla. The data is so split, you almost want to split EVs into two different categories, which are Tesla and non-Teslas, because the difference is so dramatic. Anyways, that's the end of the article, and now you can see what I mean. It's not just that they get information wrong, it's that they get it intentionally wrong because they're pushing their agenda that they're paid to push. It's seriously painful to read. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe. If you appreciate someone taking a stand against these media outlets that are extremely biased against Tesla, consider supporting me on Patreon. Huge thank you to my current Patreon supporters for allowing me to make this video. Seriously, you guys, the support means the world to me and allows me to keep making these videos, which is my dream job. I love that I'm in the position to try and correct the record and fight back against this corporate propaganda. And it's because of your support that I even can. So seriously, thank you. Thank you.